During a massive strike on Ukraine on July the 31st, Russian occupiers used a North Korean-made ballistic missile. The launch was recorded from Russian territory in the direction of Bila Servka. The missile simply fell on the territory of the Kiev region, probably after exploding in the air. This was reported by Defense Express, citing its own sources. At the crash site of this missile, debris with markings were found that match the previously discovered remains of KN-23 ballistic missiles, which the Russian Federation used to strike Ukraine in early 2024. The last recorded instance of Russian use of North Korean-made KN-23 ballistic missiles to strike Ukraine was on February the 27th, 2024. Consequently, the Russians have resumed using long-range missile weapons from the North Korea after a pause that lasted five months. One of the monitoring publics reported on the probable launch of an enemy ballistic missile in the direction of the Kyiv region on the night of July the 31st, 2024. At the same time, an assumption was made about the probable use of Iskander, but this was not officially confirmed. It is known that the North Korean ballistic missiles that the Russian Federation received at its disposal for strikes on Ukraine have warheads with high explosive equipment, the power of which is up to 1,000 kilograms in TNT equivalent. At the same time, the established maximum launch range of these missiles is up to 650 kilometers, the publication writes. In May 2024, the Prosecutor General's office reported that our experts had examined the remains of 21 of the 50 North Korean ballistic missiles that Russia had fired at Ukraine at that time. The remains of the KN-23 were found in Kyiv and the Kyiv region, Donetsk, Kirovorad, Poltava and Kharkiv regions. More than half of the KN-23 missiles lost their programmed flight path during the flight and probably exploded in the air since the launch of these missiles was recorded, but their fragments were not found. Since Russia's full-scale invasion in 2022, Ukraine has repeatedly struck Crimea, destroying or damaging about half of the Russian Navy's warships, including one submarine. As Business Insider writes, our country has used drones, naval drones, and anti-ship missiles against the fleet and the Kirsch Bridge, often with devastating consequences. Ukraine's campaign has even forced Russian warships to leave Crimea for bases in the port cities of Feodosia on the far side of Crimea and Novorossiysk in Russia. This not only prevents the occupiers from using the peninsula as a key logistics route through southern Ukraine, but also spoils its appeal for Russian tourists. But, as the publication writes, if Ukraine hopes to reclaim Crimea, it will need a huge strike force because the battle for Crimea could become the heaviest battle of the bloody war. It will be extremely difficult to get Crimea back because Crimea is essentially an island, retired U.S. Marine Corps colonel and senior advisor at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, Mark Kansian, told the publication. A landing is impossible because Ukraine lacks ships to transport large numbers of troops and their heavy equipment. In addition, Russia still has long-range aircraft and submarines, which are essentially invulnerable at sea, the expert explained. Russia has extensive military infrastructure across Crimea that would need to be severely damaged for Ukraine to have any chance of taking it back, according to Basil Germond, an international security expert at Lancaster University in the UK. Military experts and analysts told Business Insider that Crimea is difficult to reach due to its location far from the front lines, Russia's heavily fortified defensive lines and Ukraine's lack of manpower and air power. Crimea is deep inside Russian-occupied territory and far from the current front lines, Kansian said. Russia has also heavily fortified its front line with anti-tank ditches, trench warfare, dragon's teeth and minefields with most of its defenses in northern Crimea. The Russians are heavily fortified and well defended in these areas and it will take time for the Ukrainians to break down those defenses said Mark Temnitsky, a non-resident fellow at the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Without the ability to transport large forces by air or sea, Ukraine will be forced to attack through Russian defensive lines to get closer to Crimea. 
Despite the battlefield difficulties Ukraine faces, some experts believe it can retake Crimea given enough weapons, troops and time. This would require crossing the Perekop Isthmus, separating Crimea from mainland Ukraine or the Sivash. However, to do this, Ukraine first needs to break through the Surovikin Line, a complex system of defensive fortifications and obstacles in the south and east, which Ukraine has never broken through. Founder of the German think tank European Resilience Initiative Center, the question now is when Ukraine will accumulate so much firepower, not just artillery but also aviation, that will be able to break through these defensive lines and then reach the operational space of Crimea. If Ukrainian soldiers do reach Crimea, Sumleni said they could destroy the Kirsch Bridge and the last ferry crossing over the Sea of Azov, cutting off Russian supply lines to the peninsula and isolating Russian forces. Sumleni added that Crimea has historically been vulnerable to attacks.